a lot of politicians say, they say, young people are the future. No, 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 no. Young people are not the future. Young people are creating change right now. My experience with food poverty is I grew up not having enough money to afford food. I went without food in primary school a lot of the time because I wasn't on free school meals and I only just benefited from free school meals recently. Around 40% of young people in my local community experience food poverty. That 20% of kids in my school are on free school meals. That I've seen myself, that I've grown up in a food desert. A food desert is somewhere where there's limited access to healthy food. And I wanted to change that. I didn't want young people growing up thinking that it's okay to go without a meal. I became a campaigner because in the past I've actually gone through food insecurity with my family and I've seen the amount of people in schools who haven't actually been eating lunch properly or they've chose to get a piece of toast for breakfast and they are not been able to eat any lunch during the day. So I felt that it was really important for young people's voices to actually be heard. I became a campaigner for uh, Right to Food because during the start of the pandemic my family faced food insecurity and I was introduced to the Food Foundation and then campaign by a local uh, youth group that I am part of in Norfolk. I really wanted to get involved and um, start like raising awareness and help other people in similar situations and make a difference in my community. I'd come from a single parent household so I saw the difficulties in not really always having the right amount of food or not having the money to get the food and as well my, my cultural food is quite different to just your basic ready meals which is not readily available for us so it was quite difficult at times to get the food that we wanted. We are calling on the government to really introduce a right to food, for them to listen to young people. This is a pledge made by young people, by young people, for young people. As a young food ambassador, it's been really good because I just love um, going out and helping everyone and being able to make an impact and just being able to be involved, know that I'm helping a cause, trying to make something change. There is a definite stigma around food poverty in the UK and around the world. I think there's a lot of like victim blaming and things like that. And I've seen people, you know, get teased with being like underweight or having to go to free school meals. And I've seen also people who are like, on the other end of the spectrum who have like obesity problems being bullied as well. Hey, aho! Food poverty has to go. Hey, aho! Food poverty has to go! Free school meals have really meant the world to my mum and dad. It's meant that they haven't had to make hard choices between paying the bills and feeding us. One of the first things that we actually want to do is um, about free school meals, so making sure that every child who lives with people who are on universal credits gets the free school meals. What we also want to do is a food commission to see actually how many people it's affecting and to show like the MPs and everyone in the UK that this is a real thing. That's a massive one yeah. because people don't know the they don't know the numbers. Holiday hunger, we really want to end that because we get that the free school meals in school but what do the kids do when they're not in school? Everyone just needs to come together and they need to find the best way to make change. During the holidays, children who are on free school meals don't get those meals and for some of those children, many of them, um, that's the only hot meal they get during the day. If you don't eat well, you could start like, you could, something could happen but I think eating healthy and keeping it balanced is the good way to live and like, right. The footballer Marcus Rashford has forced the government into another U-turn over the provision of free meals to disadvantaged children during school holidays. One million people have signed Marcus Rashford's petition to end child food poverty in this country. One million people within a week. Fantastic. And I hope that now the government will see that it's absolutely essential to do what is right. Thank you so much for one million. Yes, let's go. We're actually getting the message across. So thank you so much. We did it. Woo! It's so nice to see how many people all across the UK care so much about what we're doing and what we're fighting for. It just shows how much people care about this and how much people are suffering as well. It's Valley Face 2021, how are we? <laughs> Hearing
hearing from everyone this weekend, it's made me understand that we need like a food revolution. It's just been great to learn about loads of different issues that I didn't even think were that important. I just want to say how inspiring this weekend has been for me. This weekend has honestly really inspired me to go out and make some change. How we move away um, and have some food and, and lower the salt and the sugar. There are recommendations here on the disgrace that is food inequality, the disgrace that is children going to bed hungry, the disgrace that is a government that seems not to understand the depths of inequality. You don't ban things, but you educate people and you try to nudge them in the right direction. I'm just really grateful to be able to come here and have this opportunity. I never would have been able to go to a festival like this otherwise. Uh, I've only recently got involved with the Right to Food and the Food Foundation, so I can't wait now to see what we're going to do in the future and see what we can achieve. And I can't wait to go back to my region and start tackling the massive food poverty and lots of uh, other issues around vulnerability that we have there. So yeah. If we like, all campaign together, we can make a huge difference not only in the UK but then throughout the entire world as well because we do really need to change the food system. It's been amazing, really inspiring just listening to everyone and meeting everyone from all across the UK. You should always reach for the stars. I believe you should actually reach for the planets that we don't know exist yet because you, if you reach for something that you don't know actually where you're going yet, you will get somewhere. People are really leading the movement on climate change. They're leading the conversation and they're making their voices heard. This is where the real conversations happen, outside, not inside. Our national leaders really need to get a grip of the situation that we're in and know that we need transformational change because, you know, as people, as banners are saying, there's no planet B. what we're here at COP for to talk about again you know how does food link in with the climate crisis and what we can do as ordinary citizens and as you know young people who are passionate um, to do something about it. I grew up in you know poverty I, I experienced pretty poor standard of living but also the the kind of idea of just trying to survive every day without food was hard um, I like my grub so to speak I like I like my food um, but when it's not there, it impacted me. It impacted me negatively. Um, I benefited from, at the time, free school meals. But I was that insecure. I had so, so much food insecurity that I knew I had to do something about it. we are young food activists. We've We've been to the government, we've been to 10 Downing Street, we've worked with the government. We want the government to put food on the agenda. I think March is like the one we had yesterday, um, the massive um, youth strike um, with, you know, thousands and thousands of people. I think it is really important and I think making our voices unavoidable at an event like this is really important and remi just reminding our leaders that we're watching them. Do you think we need to have like an ideology shift and how do we get that? It shouldn't be down to us to be seen as consumers 
driving the market. It should be down to us as citizens to make this a more political issue. Do you think business and the system can ever prioritise environment over profit? Of course it can, and there are many businesses that do, particularly if you think in the food area. I can only go back to my own experiences and what I would have been doing if I didn't have things there like youth, youth centres and stuff where me and my friends could go and play in a safe environment. Um, and obviously when they go there, they're having you know meals, they've got hot meals there prepared for them. We're talking about you know, how does the food system connect with environmental justice and climate, um, climate justice. So it's a really, really big deal. Um, so what do you think has brought this shift about? I think the reason that it has begun to shift the other way is simply that the problems have got so big that they can't be ignored. I think that we could eventually get to the point where you know, everybody in primary school um, in England and across the UK will have preschool meals. Yes, I think it should be primary and secondary school. And if you look at the culture of a school mm -hmm. where everyone eats together and they eat good food, it is just completely different from a school where that doesn't happen. I think that it depends on the area that you live in. If you live in an area that has like a high prevalence of um, food inequality, you don't really think about like the food system and like what goes, how it affects like your daily life or how it affects other different things. But if you can access food really easily, like um, local food that is healthy, then you won't need to think about it as much. A politician, they should go and look for themselves, have a look online, see what people are actually campaigning about, see what people mean, go have a look in schools, see who's not eating, see how many people are actually having free school meals each day and how many people are just above the line to get them. To my young people, I would definitely say um, don't shy away from stepping into activism because it's it doesn't take a lot it might take a post on social media it might take a quick video or a quick letter to your MPs and in that all you need to detail is the issue that's concerning you a possible solution and maybe a few signatures to show that you've got a crowd following you and how that supports you needing change and I think if you're if you're a young person and you're seeing this and you're kind of laying back on it, expecting the world to change, it's too much of a privilege to do that. We need change so you've got to step up and do it.